So I got another solar generator here or power station, whatever you want to call it. Don't freak out about the name. This one is made by Vinnick and this is their HY500 or their Hi500. I've also heard it called the PS500W, so I'm not sure which one they're going with. But it's a pretty stout little unit. It's got an aluminum body. It's very robust. It's got two DC inputs here on the back. So we're going to take a look at all of that. And the wall charger is really quite fast. I've been pretty impressed. It seems super simple and very basic, but very handy. So I'm going to do some testing on it and see if this little unit is worth it at all. So I actually forgot to mention this is a 24 volt lithium iron phosphate battery. So you're going to get about 4,000 cycles out of this, whereas something like the EcoFlow River Max 600 about 800 cycles out of it. And the Bouge RV and the Bluetti EV70, those models, they have lithium iron phosphate batteries. They're a little bit bigger than this, but the lithium iron phosphate batteries are really, really a good way to go. They're a little bit heavier, but they do last much, much longer. But at the same time, are you really ever going to use something of this size 800 times from full to empty? Well, probably very unlikely. So whereas life cycles are important, but they are some sort of determining factor when it comes to rating these different solar generators and how good they are. So keep that in mind, lithium ion has lower cycles, but is more portable. Whereas lithium iron phosphate has a lot more cycles, but is less portable. In a system like this of this size, portability is not really a big issue because it's so small. When you get into those bigger systems, that's where it really becomes a big deal. Now, one of the things that's really interesting, and especially reading the user manual, is first of all, it's really short, and that's okay, but it actually says that the solar charger is optional, and that a smart jumper clamp is also optional. I didn't see that option when I was getting this, so I just have the wall charger and the unit itself. That was all that was in the box. But I do happen to have one of these eight millimeter to MC4 adapter cables, and it does seem to be using the same style as Jackery, where it's got an eight millimeter barrel port with a small pin on the inside. So the Jackery older models, like the thousand and smaller, used the eight millimeter small pin, and then the 2000 and 1500, I'll have a review on the 1500 soon. You can go check out my review of the 2000 as well. But those have an eight millimeter large pin and you actually have to have a special adapter that only Jackery supplies. So I don't know as far as the Vinic here, what kind of adapter it'll actually come with. I didn't know I needed to order it separately, but the bottom line is hopefully this works. So this basically has a 500 watt pure sine wave inverter, about a 500 watt hour battery. It'll go up to 1000 on the peak and it says it can do 200 watts of solar input if I remember correctly. And that is from 12 volts to 30 volts. Now the wall charger is actually a really fast wall charger. This went from about 65% up to 100% and easily like 30 or 40 minutes. So on here it says it's a 204 watt charger and it is capable of running equipment while it's charging. So that's always a nice thing. And then the screen is really easy. Basically you just have a rocker switch for the power. So that's simple enough. And then if you want your DC power on, you push that. And if you want your AC power on, you push that. So it's got two AC outlets here, two DC 12 volt uh, five millimeter ports, one cigarette lighter port, four USB-A and one USB-C. And it says in the user manual that this is capable of 100 watts output for USB-C. This may be something that's good for drones and laptops and cameras and stuff like that, but be very clear, this is nothing of the proper size for an emergency power supply. Something like a CPAP machine, this would be good for, for emergency power or a light or a fan, but you're not gonna be able to run a fridge very long off of this or anything like that. So let's go ahead and do a load test. I'm gonna put 500 watts of draw on this and see how long it runs. Wow, that performed extremely, extremely well. I am super surprised how well it did. It shut off at 4%, so it basically ran for 51 minutes right here. And now the machine is still on, but it says DC off and AC off. Let's go ahead and turn the DC on, that turned on, and the AC turned right back on as well. So that was quite impressive. It is not common to get this kind of output out of a system like this. So we're looking at about an 85% efficiency rating here, which is really good. 85% is considered good. 90% is, uh, is really, really incredible. Now this does not feel hot 
at all to me. Like it still feels, I mean, it's barely, barely warm. It's very cool to the touch. The fans were not loud at all in this. They were very, very quiet. We'll go ahead and plug the wall charger in, see if it starts charging right away. Look at that, charging right away with no problem. If you guys have been watching my channel for a while, you know that there are some units or I've had some units where after doing a heavy load like this and it literally started melting down, like catching on fire, crackling, having some big issues. So that is really cool to know that even though this just ran a full load, a 1C rate discharge, that this has no problem getting charged back up with the wall charger right here. So that in and of itself is pretty incredible that it did so well. well I would say this is probably the biggest problem with the, the Vinic 500, whatever you want to call it here, is I can't see how much is going in. I can see that I'm getting a charge on my 100 watt solar panel. I got this from poweredportablesolar.com. I have tons of reviews and information about solar generators there, so click the links down below if you're interested in that. But I have a perfectly clear sunny day. There are no clouds at all. We're, the sun is at its highest peak of the day, and I can see I'm getting a charge. It's at 5% right now, but it doesn't tell me how fast it's charging. So in order to be able to, to tell how fast it's charging, I would need to get a watt meter, like the ones that are available on poweredportablesolar.com. So I think that's kind of a design flaw in this. It, is it absolutely necessary? No, but it does help quite a bit. It is nice that it shows the battery indicator here and it says it's charging and it tells me at what percentage it's at. And what's interesting about this clock that is on here, so normally, so sometimes solar generators will have a clock or a timer or something like that on the display. And that's to show how long it's gonna take for it to get fully charged or how long it'll be until it's completely empty. But not with this. This just has a timer of how long it's been turned on. So I think that's kind of useless information. I think that should be changed. Uh, it doesn't hurt to have it, but it definitely doesn't help. So I'd like to add a second 100 watt panel to this, but I can't do that safely without potentially hurting this because I can't tell how much voltage is going in. So I'd have to get one of those watt meters. One thing that has been nice is the screen does not turn off. I like that about solar generators. There's no reason for it to be turned off, especially when you're using it. The only case that it does make sense to have it turn off is at night. You don't want that light shining, but Many systems do have the option to turn off the light, like on the Titan solar generator, you can actually turn off the backlight. I don't know of a way to turn off the backlight on this, but I am glad that it does stay on. So the best I can do right now is leave this out here for a couple of hours and see how well it charges up. So I'll check back here in a couple of hours. Well, it's been exactly two hours. You can see it's a little cloudy behind me. Sorry, it's kind of whitewashed, but uh, basically some clouds have moved in, but you can see the sun is still coming through really well. And we're still charging. We're at 35% in two hours up from 5%. So in theory, we could say that this would take six hours to charge up. So it should be chargeable in a single day while still running something, because if we had a 200 watt solar panel, then we'd be up around 65% right now in theory. It's really hard to say it for 100% sure, just because I don't have a 200 watt panel. But that should be something that if you're gonna consider getting one of these that you should also figure out is getting a 200 watt panel that has a VOC less than 30 volts. But overall, that's really all there is to this. It's very simple, it's a good little system, it runs hard, it charges quickly, and I think Vinic did a good job. It's something that I think I would recommend. But again, this isn't gonna be for anything that is emergency preparedness related. At most, you're gonna run a CPAP, maybe a fan and a light. That's, uh, that's the most you could do. You're only gonna get upwards of five hours at the very most for something like this for a refrigerator. So wouldn't recommend it for that. But if you found this helpful, don't forget to click that like and subscribe button. And as you guys know, I think solar is an essential part of emergency preparedness. Thank you specifically to my subscribers. You guys are the reason why I'm doing this. Don't forget to be prepared and I'll see you guys in the next video.